To become a legend inside those four white lines is no easy task. Most had to fight for the ball because that's where the spotlight shines. Defenders had to perform thousands of clean tackles, keepers dozens of unimaginable saves, strikers had to provide a never-ending supply of goals. But there was one man who became a legend and one of the most recognizable faces in the sport without ever touching the ball. Today we're going to find out how exactly one becomes the most feared, the most respected, and by far the most legendary referee in the world, even making the cover of Pro Evolution Soccer. How does one become Pierluigi Colina? Watching Colina go about his job was impressive, as impressive as watching any of the superstars he shared the pitch with. It wasn't just that he seemed to never get a decision wrong, with the sight of a falcon and cold-headed as they got, it was the way he handled the players. He was capable of telling off anyone, even a maniac like Oliver Kahn bowed down to him like a newborn puppy, being reprimanded for munching down on your favorite pair of slippers. But in fact, over time, he didn't even need to do any of that. So much was the respect for him that players already knew not to mess around when he was watching. After all, with that deep blue stare aimed right at you, it's hard not to feel intimidated. But don't get me wrong, Kalina wasn't just a mindless tough guy of any sort. He was a diplomat. The players loved to chat around with him, and on the toughest of moments he was even capable of showing off his more tender side, helping out the players whenever they needed. He really was the best of both worlds. But how did he get there? As you might imagine, Kalina wasn't actively looking for this job. Despite his passion for basketball, just like many other refs, he was trying to make it as a football player first. But Kalina was realistic. He knew that the chances were slim, especially as he never found himself to be the most talented. At first, he just made sure to cover his bases, continually working hard in school where he got taught by nuns. And then he even took a step back, quite literally. He began playing as a center back as he found he had the best chances of making it at that position since not many kids are willing to play there, and it requires a different set of skills. Have you ever asked yourself what team a referee supports or if they're even allowed to? Well, as a teenager, Kalina followed two teams, whoever Walter Zenga played for and Lazio, though at first he was a Bologna fan. As he grew up, he fell in love with the team known as the Lazio Pistols, which demands a quick intermission. Despite his known passion for Lazio, he has made sure to say in an interview that it never influenced his decisions, so much so that Lazio never won in the first 10 of their matches he officiated. At 17 years of age, things were not looking very promising when it came to his footballing career, and that's when an interesting offer arose. It was suggested to him that maybe he should take part in a refereeing course, and very quickly, everyone was surprised at the natural talent Kalina already displayed every bit of the charisma he has gotten us used to. Over the next few years, his life was a mess. Imagine the stress he must have gone through. Kalina was 20 when he finally got to officiate his first few regional matches. But meanwhile, he was also completing his degree in economics and completing his mandatory military service, which further developed his sense of authority and discipline. After all, growing up with a mother who was a teacher, a dad who worked in the Ministry of Defense, and being taught by nuns in primary school wasn't enough, right? Among all of this, he rapidly got promoted to the Italian 3rd Division. It was impressive how fast he was progressing in his career. Everyone admired him already, but then he had to go through one of the toughest moments in his life. As he was about to finish his service, Colina developed a form of alopecia, and after only 10 days, he had lost every bit of hair in his body. To make matters worse, this came about around the same time the Italian Federation planned to move him up to Serie A and Serie B. There was some worry that the disease would affect his confidence and that he wouldn't be able to perform form as he used to, but Kalina is different. If it affects his self-esteem in any way, he surely made it so no one would be aware. Standing at 6 foot 2, Kalina was as imposing as most center backs, but now bald, it seemed his deep blue eyes were more piercing than ever, and his new look also earned him his nickname Kojak, like the bald detective from the TV show of the same name, which given his love for pistol whipping footballers, I'm sure Kalina appreciated. Four years later in 1995, after having refereed only 43 top flight matches in Italy, Colina was put on FIFA's referees list. Once again, the rapid pace at which he progressed through his career was frightening. He was like the Erling Haaland of referees. Even more impressively, he was immediately allocated to five matches in the 1996 Olympics, including the final between Nigeria and Argentina, an absolute classic of African football where Okocha and Kanu led their team as they went behind twice and still managed to win it in injury time. 
Following this, Kalina took part in the 1998 World Cup, where despite not getting to officiate the final, he left the mark, sending off Kluivert in a heated group stage match against Belgium. If this time he didn't get to be in the final, the next year it was a whole different story. After numerous great performances in the Champions League, and after being awarded the Referee of the Year award in 1998, Kalina was selected for the 1999 UCL final only four years after his first call up by FIFA. What was the secret of his success? Well, besides his demeanor, he was also fluent in different languages, being able to communicate with any player with ease, which allowed him to more easily empathize with them. But above all, what set him apart was his preparation for the matches. He took it all a step further. He would study the formations and styles of play, assessing which players were most likely to clash during the game. He gathered info on which players are more likely to fake injuries, dive, or get physical with others. His philosophy is that a referee can't be caught off guard. You have to know when and how the players will act before they do. It was with philosophy that he helped UEFA reduce the number of yellow cards shown in their tournaments. In a way, he laid the foundation for modern refereeing. Over the next three years, Kalina took part in the Euro 2000 and was bound to take center stage at the 2002 World Cup. Along the way, he grew more and more in notoriety and racked up three more awards for IFFHS Referee of the Year. At the World Cup, he officiated three matches, two of them being purposely picked for him due to the difficulty involved, the first of which was England versus Argentina, ever since 1986, with Maradona scoring the famous Hand of God during the Falklands War between both countries. Relationships had been tense, and it only got worse as in the previous World Cup. The deciding moment came with David Beckham sending off after a foul on Diego Simeone. If once their anger was directed at each, a share of it was now for the referee, but Kalina was having none of it. And finally, the match went by smoothly, with England taking the win and sending Argentina out of the tournament. The second of those matches was, of course, the final between Brazil and Germany. But first, some background. Kalina had an odd relationship with Khan. Having to order around a man like their TN wasn't easy, especially when he lost. So fact that Kalina managed to maintain a relationship with him that was based on the utmost respect for his authority became even more impressive when it started being noticed that Khan would always lose whenever Kalina officiated his matches from the UCL final to the Euros and even a 5-1 to one demolition by England in the qualifying stages. The link had been settled and Khan was aware of it. Before the match, he was asked about Kalina and famously said, he is a world-class referee. There is no doubt about that, but does he bring me any luck? Clearly not. And this time, it wouldn't be any different. Two goals by Ronaldo in quick succession would send Khan home without any silverware. As Kalina kept crossing off every big game from his bucket list, the next one in line was the UEFA Cup Final. This was easily the big game he influenced the most, having to show Fabien B. Barthez a red card and giving away a penalty right before halftime, opening the way for Valencia's eventual 2-0 win. Over the summer, he took part in Euros yet again, but didn't get awarded with the chance to officiate the final, and with the FIFA referee age limit coming the following year, he was destined to never cross the Euro final from his list. But here came a moment that proved just how legendary he was. So much was his popularity that the Italian Federation raised his own age limit to allow for Kalina to keep on officiating for an extra year. However, it all came crashing down soon in an unfortunate manner. Kalina had signed a sponsorship deal with Opel and given they were also sponsors of AC Milan. The whole thing was seen as a conflict of interest and the Federation decided he wasn't allowed to referee any top flight matches as long as this deal was still on. So Kalina filed in his resignation letter and then the Federation tried rejecting it. But what could they do? Kalina just pretended like they didn't say anything and carried on with his retirement, which might be the biggest power move ever. After all, he is a six-time IFFHS Referee of the Year winner, two times more than anyone else, a member of the Italian Football Hall of Fame, and to this day, the only referee ever to swap a shirt with the player, being handed David Beckham's number seven shirt at the request of Sir Alex Ferguson. Ever since, he has kept being a good influence in football, coming back to the pitch whenever there's a soccer aid match and working as the head of referees at UEFA and as a financial advisor because he had to use that degree for something, right? Kalina's legacy extends beyond his remarkable career as a referee. His dedication to fair play, integrity, and professionalism has left an indelible mark on the world of football. Pierluigi Kalina remains a symbol of excellence and integrity in the beautiful game, a true legend whose impact will be felt for generations to come.